and uh, also an old friend in Canyon City, a territorial unit. In 1992, I was walking across the yard towards the sweat lodge area and I seen er Ernesto Miranda, my old landlord uh, from my CSU days in uh, Fort Collins. So Ernie, is that you? Come on over and get your tall and trunks or go to the sweat lodge. So I introduced him to the sweat lodge. So it's a small world we're able to share these uh, revolutionary thoughts, these revolutionary acts. They're spiritual in, in our tradition and culture. As I said, no hable espanol, but I know by your action and you're for real. And I love what was said here by the different people. And I was talking to uh, Cindy Fuentes here. They went to school the same time we did at CSU, huh? And she said, yeah. So I, I just, uh, that's my experience, brothers and sisters. You're beautiful. Chicanos, Indians, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, African Americans. You know, I, I was also at the USP Atlanta, Georgia, and I uh, saw Asada Shakur on the yard. And I said, come in and swear with us, bro. He looked at me and he said, who are you? I said, I'm with the American Indian movement. I'm your spiritual advisor. So he came in and he loved it. And he tells the, uh, the black liberation people. And I, I tried to get into Tehachapi, California to see uh, Geronimo Pratt to run sweat for him. And I felt that obligation, that responsibility that was taught to me by my mother and father. My father was a USMC code talker. There's not. Wow. There's not that many alive today, but the history that they've gone through so we could be who we are today. I'm always thankful because my father didn't, he didn't, he didn't finish high school. I myself, my younger, earlier years, I grew up in a sheep camp, herding sheep from my grandparents, and that's where I learned how to speak the name. USMC, code talker, and lean that. So that molded me into who I am today. And I'll stand beside you in this struggle, in this revolution, to obtain our human rights for our people, our gener next generation. So I just uh, have this love and solidarity for the people like that. Just the upbringing. And like I said, when I worked for the Colorado Migrant Council, when I went to CSU, UMAS, and the people that I met, and, and uh, just the friendship that I made, allowed me to participate in the struggle and, and, and to gain an understanding. In uh, the last 28 years, I've been visiting Leonard Peltier and, and uh, doing sweat lodge ceremonies for the ancient cleansing uh, purification ceremony. I participated in the Sundance with him up in Rosebud, South Dakota. And I saw him three weeks ago and he sends his love, his solidarity, his greetings to you all because I told him he's coming here. We want to free Leonard Peltier. And at this time, I'm working on an executive clemency program with uh, several other people with their uh, support committee. And one of our strategy is to uh, approach the uh, Obama administration through the National Congress of American Indians and has set up a meeting to discuss executive clemency. He's been incarcerated for 38 years. He's 70 years old. He, deserves to be free to, to spend as many days. So we appreciate your support, your love, and your prayers. You know, I'll, uh, on my next visit in July, I'll, I'll tell them that I, I came to this uh, conference to uh, lend my, uh, and lend his uh, support and, and love, solidarity to the struggle of the Chicano movement and to remember in homage to uh, Los Siestes of uh, the Boulder. And uh, I never met them, but uh, my heart grieves for them. And I, I feel uh, 
I, I just want to express my condolences to his family, to their families, their loved ones, the clan, the community, and, and to, to all of you who are feeling that. And uh, we want to free uh, Leonard Peltier with your help. So I, in, in closing, I just want to thank you for allowing me this opportunity to, to sit on this uh, very uh, well-known, prestigious people in their own right that are part of this panel and, and to, to speak to you and to allow me to speak to you. So in, in closing, I would like to sing a song. I don't know where that drum went, but uh, they had a beautiful hand drum there. I'd like to read it. I'd like to uh, dedicate this to all the people in the, in the movement and the Chicano struggle. Chicano movement. Do you know how it's so? How's it all? If they question, how's it?